I'm having a lot of questions about the use of side. And KFM, well, he really wants to know at what point would a novice go from learning potting angles using plain ball shots to add in the complication of side? I have to say that this question is unanswerable, really, because so much depends on so many factors. So we have a novice who's encouraged to hit the ball in the centre and deliver that cue in a straight line. Now if he can pop straight balls using that technique, then we can start then moving on to angle shots. From there, if he can do angle shots consistently, he doesn't need the use of side generally speaking. The only time we need side is to position the cue ball, right? It's only the really very, very experienced player who will use side to pop the object ball. In other words, somebody like Ronnie who very often kicks the ball into the pocket with side. Beginners don't need to go down that road. They mustn't go down that road. Yeah. Side is something that just sort of develops into your game. You're playing an angle pot using centre ball and you're screwing off that ball onto the cushion and we'll say to get on the blue ball. But you're a little bit short all the time or hitting the ball not getting quite enough screw on it. Right? So this is where side comes in. You can still pot the ball Still got the screw on, but now we're hitting the cushion and coming up at a more severe angle to get that position. All right? There is no answer to this question, really. It's just a, a progression that naturally happens. Yeah? If you can pop balls consistently using centre ball striking, stick with it. The sign will develop on its own. Don't use it unnecessarily. Okay, I hope that answers the question. But I've come back to my initial statement. The, the question really is unanswerable. It just develops over time and with experience. Raji is asking a question about the draw shot. Well, from the fact that he's using the term draw, tells me that he's more of a a pool player than a snooker player. I hope I'm right on that one. But the point he's asking is that does he aim with the cue parallel and then drop the cue or raise the butt to get the cue down to the, the bottom of the white for his draw shot? Or does he start in that position before he does his preparation? Well, the first thing, Raji, I would say is that you try to keep that cue as parallel as you can. Don't make a conscious effort to lift this butt up to get this down to the bottom. Please don't make a conscious effort to do that. Just point the cue at the bottom of the cue ball, trying to keep this end, the butt end, as low as you can. Obviously, it will be slightly raised, but trying to keep it down is the real lesson. So start in that position, do your preparation in that position, play the shot in that position. Good luck with that practice. I've got another question here about the wearing of glasses. And it comes from Freddie. If he wears glasses, when he goes down to shoot, he's seeing over the glasses. What should he do about that? Well, I fair, covered this fairly comprehensively in one of my videos. But let's just have a, another quick recap. First thing is, when I first started wearing glasses, yeah, I used to try and lift my ordinary glasses up. Uh, I'd sellotape up there to hold them up. I've even tried a nose bridge to lift the glasses up. If you don't get it right... If you don't get the angle of the lens right, yeah, the balls can go elliptical, they look big one day, small the next. You have all these sorts of problems. 
the real best solution is if you can, if you can afford them, if you can wear them, is contact lenses. There's no doubt about that. Contact lenses are better than any form of glasses. Having said that, if you don't want to go down the glasses route, I can recommend this fella. It's snookerspecs.com. And a fella called Chris Chetia who runs it. He works online. He'll want a couple of measurements off you, right? And then he will give you what you need. Now, this, the beauty of Chris is that he is a qualified optician and he's also a very good snooker player, all right? And he knows exactly what a snooker player needs. And he will provide you with the spectacles that you need. Now, what I want to emphasize again, that if you don't get the angle of that lens right, you know, those balls will go misshapen. And it's so off-putting. So, please bear in mind, some ordinary opticians, they can do it very well. Yeah, a lot can't. This fella can. He gets it right every time. So, have a look at his website, snookerspecs.com. A lot of players are having uh, a few problems with the tip they use. And Rees goes on to ask, uh, I see a lot of cheap tips for sale on eBay. You know, and he's talking about 50 tips from roughly about three pounds from China. Do I think these are inadequate for snooker? And what kind of problems may they present? Well, I'm not in favor of, uh, you know, dirt cheap tips. They tend to be very inconsistent. One will be soft, one will be hard. They tend to break up when you use them. Uh, you chalk them, they become flaky. No, don't go down that road. Equally, there's no need to go for the very expensive tips. You know, if you're uh, asking this question, you're not a professional. So, you know, the end result, will it make that much difference to you? And the truth is, no. I've used Elk Master tips for many years, and a lot of the pros still use them. Elk Master tip. You can buy a box uh, of Elk Master tips, and most of them will be okay. Okay, you'll have to throw the odd one away, but generally speaking, they're a very good tip. I've still used them on occasions. Um, and a lot of the pros still use them. Having said that, very recently I've gone to the Sentry Tips. Not a great deal of difference for me, except for one point. They are more consistent. If I buy three Elk Masters, I might throw one away. If I buy three Sentries, Sentry Tips, then generally speaking those three will be okay. So, consistency is the key. And that's what good players are looking for. But don't go down the road of cheap, dirt cheap tips. They will let you down at some point. I had a question from Ben, who seems to be having a problem getting a nice dome, on, dome shape on this tip. Well, Ben, uh, I'm assuming that you've put the, the tip on adequately and you've made it flush with the cue. That's point one. What I would recommend is that you use wet and dry, not satin paper, wet and dry paper, all right? And get a medium grade, all right? I say don't use sandpaper because sandpaper can, bits and bobs come off it and get embedded in the surface of the tip. Wet and dry, much more substantial, and it doesn't happen. I'm not encouraging you to use it wet, though. Use it dry, <laughs> right? So then we go from the centre of the tip and work downwards. Always rotating the cue. And take your time, keep looking at the tip, right? Just have a look at it. And there's no way, can you fail to get a nice dome on that tip, all right? Just keep doing it, rotating. Take your time and it will happen. Just having a quick look at it all the time. Alright? Now if you look at my tip here, that's all I've done. I've made it flush with the ferrule, with a knife. Then I've got the, the wet and dry paper creating that nice dome. 
Just take your time, it will come. All right. Douglas is asking a question about the line of the shot. Apparently my video has confused some people about this and he doesn't quite understand the concept of the line of the shot. Well, let's just see if we can enlarge on it. The first thing is we've got two lines, right? We've got the line from the cue ball to that point on the object ball that we want to hit and then we've got a line from the object ball to the pocket. Right, the concept that I'm talking about is that line from the object ball to the pocket. You point the cue in the direction or that you want it to go and okay that's one line but that odd point on the object ball is dictated by the line that the object ball takes to the pocket. So that is the line that you visualize. Right? And that tells you where to hit the object ball. Right? Now it talks about the line to the ghost ball. Right? Well yes, up to a point that's correct. But let's remember if you look at my video on the ghost ball, the ghost ball theory, whilst it's very accurate, it's not totally precise all right on an angle shot you get a squeeze effect so you know the object ball is not strictly true the, uh, when we come to the ghost ball method so see the line that you want that object ball to take aim accordingly yes it, it might be a half ball contact but that tells you a line that the object ball is going to take experience will teach you what this line is the line of the shot okay only experience can teach you that nothing else yes we've got a, a full ball contact yeah that's the line of the shot that it's going to take we've got a half ball contact that's the line that the object ball is going to take all right that but if it's not quite a half ball contact we have to make some adjustments so the experienced player sees that line, all right? He sees that I need to aim a little bit thinner to get it to the pocket, or I need to aim a little bit thicker to get it to the pocket. That is the line we're looking for. And the exper experienced player sees that line of the shot, okay? Only experience can teach you it. So have a little go at it. See how you go on. Make those adjustments. You will soon start to learn the line of the shot. Good luck with that practice. I have a question from Faison, who's concerned about keeping the cue parallel with the table. He wants to know, should I keep the cue or strive to keep the cue parallel or have it raised slightly at the back end? Right, Faison. The object is to keep that cue as parallel with the table as you can. That means that you've got a better chance of not putting a swerve effect or a slight swerve effect on the cue ball. Let's just enlarge on that a little bit. If you want to swerve the ball, all right, then you hit it on the, the cue ball on the side and you raise the book. And that's the, the way in which you will swerve the ball. Now take it from me. One of the hardest things in the game is to hit that cue ball in the centre. On its central axis. Down the middle of it. Alright. And if you're slightly off and the cue ball is raised. There is a slight possibility that you'll swerve the ball. Yeah. Having said that. If you look at top players, yes, they try to keep the cue parallel. Yeah, but it's impossible on some shots. All right? The, the, the cushion rail is above the bed. So if you're hitting the cue ball on the bottom, all right, then it's inevitable that that cue butt is going to be raised a little bit. All right? There's not a lot you can do about that. But... You try to keep it as near parallel as you can, as you can. Then you will reduce any errors that may or may not be there. So try to keep it parallel, 
but they're in mine. Some shots, it's absolutely impossible. Okay, good luck with the app practice. I'd like to say thank you to those who have viewed the channel and indeed those who have subscribed to the channel. Thanks for that. Thank you also for the questions that you sent in. I hope that I've helped with the answers that I've given. Uh, don't forget also that although I've given these answers here, a lot of those aspects that we've covered are there on the channel in video form. So this is just a, a sort of a reminder or a recap on what we've already done. Once again, uh, I hope it's not too long before we get back onto the table doing a few more videos. As I said at the start, it's uh, impossible at the moment, but the lockdown is easing and hopefully the club where I do the video in will be open soon. In the meantime, please stay safe. Good luck with your practice when you get a chance to do some and see you all soon.